Track 3. Listening Part 1. Worksheet 3. You will hear three different extracts. For questions 1 to 6, choose the answer A, B or C, which fits best according to what you hear. There are two questions for each extract. Extract 1. You hear two students talking about spending a gap year in Australia before going to university. Now look at questions 1 and 2. During my gap year in Australia, I met so many other Brits my age doing the same thing before going to uni back in the UK. They'd all done the same journey out there via Southeast Asia, stopping off briefly in Thailand and Bali on the way. Really unmissable places with jaw-dropping scenery. I made some good friends travelling in Australia in my gap year. So often people claimed their main motivation for going was the unspoilt beaches, the wildlife, the rainforests, the endless sunshine. But that's true for lots of destinations. I actually think the major additional lure is that there's one obstacle you don't have to overcome. Worrying about asking for directions or how to get around, which could be pretty daunting if you're staying somewhere for a while. It's a massive country and surprisingly pricey. I took the bus between cities. Flying really defeats the object of travel. So much of the country's character is revealed in those vast distances of pure nothingness. I did struggle to make ends meet. I earned a bit doing bits and pieces of work here and there. It wasn't easy to come by. Rather than pay high rent, I stayed in basic hostels. But it was good. I kept bumping into the same people, all on a tight budget, of course. Now listen again. During my gap year in Australia, I met so many other Brits my age doing the same thing before going to uni back in the UK. They'd all done the same journey out there via Southeast Asia, stopping off briefly in Thailand and Bali on the way. Really unmissable places with jaw-dropping scenery. I made some good friends travelling in Australia in my gap year. So often people claimed their main motivation for going was the unspoilt beaches, the wildlife, the rainforests, the endless sunshine. But that's true for lots of destinations. I actually think the major additional lure is that there's one obstacle you don't have to overcome. Worrying about asking for directions or how to get around, which could be pretty daunting if you're staying somewhere for a while. It's a massive country and surprisingly pricey. I took the bus between cities. Flying really defeats the object of travel. So much of the country's character is revealed in those vast distances of pure nothingness. I did struggle to make ends meet. I earned a bit doing bits and pieces of work here and there, it wasn't easy to come by. Rather than pay high rent, I stayed in basic hostels. But it was good. I kept bumping into the same people, all on a tight budget, of course. Extract 2. You hear two friends discussing the purpose of travelling. Now listen to questions 3 and 4. You're busy planning your next trip, Ollie. Do you always feel a sense of purpose to your travels? To be honest, I might sometimes have felt like I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. That's not often the case, but I do think you need to get off the beaten track. I try to go to new places. Once there, I'm a fan of just hanging out and trying to get to understand the vibe of a place and observe the way of life. I make a point of asking questions so I can find places where I can chill out and discover what's going on. Rather than ticking it off as a place I've done because I went on some amazing tour to a waterfall or got a great picture of a tiger, you travel, what motivates you? For me, it's about stepping out of my comfort zone. Traveling alone gives you experiences that teach you about yourself. It's funny how what might have been a really bad experience, say getting lost or missing the only bus that day, can turn into an anecdote, which makes you see things differently. Having a story that ends up making your friends laugh is quite cool, really. 
Anyway, I've realized that although I'm pretty tough, tears come too easily when I'm tired and someone shouts at me. Now listen again. You're busy planning your next trip, Ollie. Do you always feel a sense of purpose to your travels? To be honest, I might sometimes have felt like I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. That's not often the case, but I do think you need to get off the beaten track. I try to go to new places. Once there, I'm a fan of just hanging out and trying to get to understand the vibe of a place and observe the way of life. I make a point of asking questions so I can find places where I can chill out and discover what's going on. Rather than ticking it off as a place I've done because I went on some amazing tour to a waterfall or got a great picture of a tiger, you travel. What motivates you? For me, it's about stepping out of my comfort zone. Traveling alone gives you experiences that teach you about yourself. It's funny how what might have been a really bad experience, say getting lost or missing the only bus that day, can turn into an anecdote, which makes you see things differently. Having a story that ends up making your friends laugh is quite cool, really. Anyway, I've realized that although I'm pretty tough, tears come too easily when I'm tired and someone shouts at me. Extract 3. You hear two colleagues talking about a trip to a conference. Now listen to questions 5 and 6. So, flying to Edinburgh tomorrow for the conference. I can't wait. Why so keen? We've both got to give talks tomorrow, that very afternoon. I know. I should really be looking at my presentation and going over my latest improvements so I remember them. I've been through it quite thoroughly, so I'm happy that the slides won't need to be altered. You swore you'd listen to me go through mine one more time today. There's no cause to doubt my word. You'd better not be joking about that. On condition you listen to my delivery too. Sure. Anyway, I've no intention of making any major adjustments. I'd just appreciate some constructive criticism about whether I'm pausing in the right places or speaking too fast. You know, the sort of thing. Absolutely. That's what I need too. It'll be a relief not to be stuck in this cramped office. The renovations to our old one must have been going on for at least two months now. The prospect of getting away makes up for the weeks of preparation. Anyway, I've made a point of packing light so as not to have to drag a heavy case onto the airport train. I'd far rather have taken a taxi there. If only I'd been in charge of organising things. Now listen again. So, flying to Edinburgh tomorrow for the conference. I can't wait. Why so keen? We've both got to give talks tomorrow, that very afternoon. I know. I should really be looking at my presentation and going over my latest improvements so I remember them. I've been through it quite thoroughly, so I'm happy that the slides won't need to be altered. You swore you'd listen to me go through mine one more time today. There's no cause to doubt my word. You'd better not be joking about that. On condition you listen to my delivery too. Sure. Anyway, I've no intention of making any major adjustments. I'd just appreciate some constructive criticism about whether I'm pausing in the right places or speaking too fast. You know, the sort of thing. Absolutely. That's what I need too. It'll be a relief not to be stuck in this cramped office. The renovations to our old one must have been going on for at least two months now. The prospect of getting away makes up for the weeks of preparation. Anyway, I've made a point of packing light so as not to have to drag a heavy case onto the airport train. I'd far rather have taken a taxi there. If only I'd been in charge of organising things.